Hi everybody, well it's great to be back here to do yet another assembly with you. Um, as you can see, I'm in a different place again. Still in the house though, because I'm still not allowed back in school. I hope those of you who are back at school are having a great time. And those of you who are not, are still managing to do your schoolwork at home, being homeschooled. It's all new, isn't it? And exciting. But maybe you're getting used to it now. So last week, I talked a little bit about the creation story, didn't I? And how God made everything around us and made us. And I said I would continue that story today. So I'm going to do just that. But you know, today's story is not quite as happy as last week's. Because today, we're going to think a little bit about the consequences of when we do something we're told not to do. So I wonder how many of you have done things when you know you shouldn't do them and when somebody's told you not to do them. What sort of things have you done? Come on then, shout out some things that you might have done that you shouldn't have done. Okay, yes, you shouldn't go in your brother or sister's bedrooms and take their stuff. Absolutely, no, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't say no when mum and dad ask you to help around the house. Absolutely. You shouldn't scribble in your schoolwork books. Not at all. No. You shouldn't run away when you're outside for a walk. No, that can be quite scary for your mum or dad or whoever's got you out because they don't know where you're going. There's lots of things we shouldn't do and we know we shouldn't do them. But we still do them, don't we? So let's hear our story, shall we? From um, my Bible, as you know, I'm reading from this Bible, which is the Storyteller's Bible. And we're going to continue that story about the Garden of Eden. If this is what it says. Are you ready? Welcome to my world, God said to Adam. It's good, isn't it? Welcome to my garden, God said to Eve. This is the most, most beautiful place of all, and I want it to be your home. Take care of the animals for me, take care of the plants, and eat whatever you like. There are plenty of trees to pick from. Adam and Eve didn't know what to say. They looked at the garden, they looked at each other, and then they smiled the world's first ever smile. Life was going to be perfect here, just perfect. There's just one more thing, God said. Do you see that tree over there? The one in the middle of the garden? Well, the fruit on that tree is not good for you. If you eat it, you will make me very unhappy. And you will have to leave this beautiful place. Adam and Eve looked at each other again. With so many other trees to choose from, that hardly seemed to be a problem. And for a long time, they were content with soft, juicy pears, sweet, thick-skinned oranges, and round, ripe melons that grew in the garden. Then one day, the serpent came to visit. Tell me, the serpent said to Eve, which trees are you allowed to eat from? Every tree, Eve smiled, except the one in the middle of the garden. Oh, asked the, the, creep, asked the crafty serpent. But why is that? Because it would make God unhappy. Eve said, and we would have to leave this beautiful place. Ridiculous, laughed the serpent. God doesn't want you to eat that fruit because he knows it would make you as clever as him. You know all about being good, but God has told you nothing about what it means to be bad. Eat the fruit. And you will know all about that, too. Eve thought that the fruit did look delicious. 
she'd sometimes wondered what it would taste like, and it wasn't really fair of God to keep things from them. So she picked an apple. She took a bite, and she gave Adam a taste as well. And right away, they discovered what it meant to do something bad. Their stomachs churned with guilt, their faces turned red with shame, and instead of running to meet God when he next visited the garden, they ran away to hide. I know what you've done, God called out sadly. Now you will have to leave this beautiful place. Goodbye, God said to Adam. From now on, you will have to scratch at the earth for the food you eat. Goodbye, God said to Eve. Your life will be hard too. And when your lives end, God said finally, you will go back to the ground from which you came. Adam and Eve looked at each other. Then they walked sadly out of the garden. They had learned what it meant to be bad and they had changed God's world forever. Wow, that's a sad story, isn't it? But it's the way it was. And sometimes when we do things wrong, we have to pay the consequence. And the consequence of Adam and Eve's bad thing was that they had to leave that beautiful garden. Sometimes life is tough. It's tough right now, isn't it, living in lockdown? So we have to learn how to do lots of good things so we can pass them on. But we also have to learn about the bad things so we can tell people about them too. And maybe they won't do it. And that's what we have to learn from this. So it's a bit of a sad story to go with the good story from last week. But at least we know that God is always there with us. He's always there to help us. And he's always there when we're feeling like we just don't know what to do. He'll help us to find a way through. Never forget that. So last week I asked you to do some pictures about creation. And I'm happy to say that I've got a few to show you. So I'm going to show them to you now. And while I show them to you, I'm going to play a little bit of music. And then once we've seen them, we're going to sing a song again. I love it when we sing, so we'll sing in a moment. But here's the pictures first. Well, weren't they lovely pictures? So, having seen the pictures and heard the story, I wonder if you can tell me what sort of things you're going to do that's going to make things better. Maybe you've done something you shouldn't, but what are you going to do now to help other people and to make things, make life seem better? Right, come on then. You're going to what? All oh, right, okay. You're going to help mum and dad when the washing up needs doing? To fold the clothes. Brilliant. You're going to help to make a cup of tea. Well, be careful. Make sure there's somebody there if you're going to boil a kettle because that'll be hot. All right. So just be careful. But yes, you can help to do that. You're going to play with your little brothers and sisters. Fantastic. Because that'll help mum and dad, won't it? You're going to do your schoolwork when you're told to. Oh, do you know, you're all going to do something that's going to make life better at the moment. You are all just wonderful and amazing. So I think we should sing. Now, a few weeks ago, we did one that was a bit different. It was words that you knew, but it was done in a very different way. And it was, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, I think. But I thought we'd have that one again, because lots of people said how much they enjoyed the newer version, the up-to-date version. So let's sing that one, shall we? Let's do it together. 
My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. enjoyed that i love that one that just makes it more modern and accessible doesn't it you know all those actions and it's true isn't it god is big and mighty and there's nothing that he won't do for us so we have to remember that when times are sad and difficult god is there and that's just amazing okay so we've had our little story we've had a song we've thought about it and reflected on it so let's have a little prayer now shall we let's pray about it and i have a little prayer in my book that i want to read before we do the lord's prayer let's pray dear god we are sorry that sometimes we do wrong things please help us to know the difference between good and bad and help us to choose what is right and help others amen so now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. And I know you all know it, but the words will come up on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those 
who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, there we are, assembly done yet again. Now, right at the beginning of lockdown, we did an assembly which was about hope, and hope is a good thing. But, you know, the next bit of the creation story in my Bible, in my storyteller Bible, is about Noah and Noah's Ark. So I thought next week we might tell that story. So here's another thing for you to do. I know you've all done rainbows for people to put in their windows, but maybe, maybe we need to just revamp them a little bit, do we? So if you want to write, draw a rainbow, colour in a rainbow and put them up on the website, if you want to email them to me, that's great. That's on our website and you can get to that through the school, through South Crossland Junior School and you can get to me that way. So just do a rainbow, even if it's just to put up in your own window and next week we'll tell the story of Noah's Ark. I know you know that one, so be ready. So bye everybody, have a great week. See you next week. Bye.